Hi there. Um, we're going to talk today about RICO's information guide. As of December the 1st, uh, the information guide will be available to you through the RICO website and through links that they are setting up. It's going to be our obligation as agents that as soon as we're dealing with a consumer, we're going to have to provide the RICO information guide to the consumer so that they understand and can make their choices about working with an agent. So while you are in there, in the guide, you're going to take a look at it and you're going to um, guide your clients or consumers rather through it. So on the first page, it is a 13 page guide, but once you're past the cover page and on the first page, it will tell you exactly what's inside the guide. So it tells you where you're getting this from a real estate agent. And it's asking the consumer to read what is inside and it's guiding you through it. So you're going to be pointing them to the sections that they need to understand. Uh, the first one is working with a real estate uh, agent. The second one is knowing the risks of representing yourself. Third one is signing a contract with a real estate brokerage. The fourth one is understanding multiple representation. And then they also include a section for the public on how to make a complaint. So when you are going to the first page, which is a description of working with a real estate agent, um, it, it explains to the consumer what agents do. And of course, as we know, uh, there are two types of consumers. There are sellers and there are buyers. So you're going to direct them and explain to them what you do as a seller's agent and what you do as a buyer's agent. Um, it tells you quite specifically um, what agent services are available to them in here and exactly what the overview of your responsibility is. You will also uh, find on the next page the duties of the brokerage and the agent what we owe to the consumer when they become a client. They're going to discuss with you their undivided loyalty, the disclosures that you have to make to the client, and how you are there to keep confidentiality for their, the client. And you also have to explain to them that you will be there to avoid any conflicts of interest. It also goes into the responsibilities of the client. So the consumer needs to understand that when they become a client under a representation agreement, they also have responsibilities. Um, they need to be clear about what they need and uh, don't need or want and don't want from their agent or from the transaction they're about to enter into. Um, they need to understand that they have to uh, respond to their agent's questions quickly because we do work under timelines. And they have to understand the terms of the agreement that they will be signing their representation agreement. And they also have to understand that by an, uh, hiring an agent, they are responsible to make sure that our fees are paid. Next, um, the guide does a very good uh, explanation on the risks of people representing themselves. Um, it explains that there are significant risks to representing themselves. 
Um, it explains that uh, it's recommended that they get professional advice before they proceed uh, with, rec with representing themselves. And it also tells very specific risks of if they not if they choose not to work with a real estate agent. It uh, it outlines their own responsibilities for making inquiries about permitted uses, zoning, etc., about determining what they believe the value of the property is about determining what they're willing to offer or accept. Um, it's their responsibility as well to navigate competing offers, but actually for navigating all offers and deciding what terms to include in an agreement of purchase and sale. They're also responsible for preparing all their own documents. So if you are assisting an SRP or self-represented party, they need to understand that you are not preparing documents for them. They need to understand that the real estate agent that they're dealing with is working for another party in the transaction and that we as have an obligation to our client to disclose your motivation, the seller, um, the self-represented party's uh, motivation for buying or selling a property uh, for a minimum or maximum price that the self-represented party is willing to pay or um, their preferred terms or conditions to an agreement of purchase and sale. If the agent is aware of these things, so the self-represented party needs to understand that we have an obligation to look after our client's best interests by revealing all of this to our client if we know it. The self-represented party or actually consumer who is thinking about becoming a self-represented party needs to understand that the agent cannot provide them with any services, opinions, or advice. They cannot do anything that would encourage them to rely on the agent's knowledge, skill, or judgment. And the agent cannot encourage the SRP to represent himself or discourage him from working with another real estate agent or brokerage. Um, any assistance that the agent offers an SRP they need to understand is a service to their own client, not to the SRP, is in the best interests of the client, not the best interests of the SRP, and is to help their client sell or buy property. Also, the SRP who is considering thinking about going self-represented needs to understand that anywhere through the process, they can change their mind and uh, become a client of a real estate brokerage at any point during the transaction. So those are the outlines of um, how we as agents deal with an SRP and the consumer needs to understand this. This guide is very specific and written very clearly so that um, the consumer can understand what they're getting into if they choose to go uh, self-represented. The next part of the guide is about signing a contract with a real estate brokerage. So it outlines um, two different brokerage um, representations. One is with a full brokerage or the other one is a designated representation under a brokerage. We are um, specifically encouraging all of our contracts to be written up as designated representation that will keep you out of multiple representation for the most part. The guide um, explains to a consumer that when they become a client, a representation agreement has to be signed with the brokerage. Um, if they do not wish to sign an agreement, you should not expect 
the real estate agent to provide you with any services like showing you homes. You have to make that clear to the consumer that you are not working for a consumer without some sort of a written representation agreement in place. I know that currently, uh, especially with customer service, which will no longer exist, the general public feels they are entitled to work with a real estate agent until they commit to a property. This is not the case in future. Remember that you are working as an agent under representation agreements. When you are talking to the public, they need to understand what to look for in a, in a representation agreement. And the, uh, the RICO information guide outlines what they should be looking for. So what they're going to be looking for is, of course, the brokerage information, but also the name of their designated representative. The scope of, it says, of the engagement. But if you're a seller, this means that the, um, the uh, representation agreement or listing agreement will identify the specific property. If you're a buyer, uh, the scope of the agreement would be um, a specific property or a geographic area you're searching in or a type of property. So all of that should be outlined just as it is now in a buyer representation agreement. The um, representation agreement should outline the services um, that your agent that you're dealing with is going to offer you. The representation agreement will outline payment amount and terms. So if you're a seller, um, it's going to outline how much you're going to agree to pay your brokerage, the amount, um, if any, to compensate a buyer brokerage, and how the amounts you agree to pay will change if, uh, if people consent to multiple representation. Um, also, if you are a buyer, your agreement needs to clearly indicate the amount that you agree to pay your brokerage for their services, how the amount you agree to pay will change if the seller agrees to cover some or all of the brokerage fees and how the amount you agree to pay will change if you consent to multiple representations. This is um, the information the guide is giving the consumer. So be prepared to discuss those items. Further to that, a representation agreement needs to outline termination provisions if there are any. Um, who can terminate the agreement and under what terms. Uh, just as now, we do not arbitrarily uh, terminate agreements. Um, two important circumstances to be aware of are multiple representation and changing your designated representative. The, um, the representation agreement must outline um, must outline, um, I guess, examples or um, terms that would, uh, if any way, change the agreement under these circumstances. And the last thing that the last couple of things that the guide uh, talks about in a representation agreement are the expiry date. It must be very um very clear when the agreement expires. And also you need to be able to uh, explain a holdover clause that protects the brokerage. You need to understand um, that and be able to explain that to a consumer what that means. The next part of the information guide explains multiple representation. 
And I will say to you that um, multiple representation has become um, problematic for the public. They don't understand it. And it is part of why uh, Tressa has come into being. So the new Tressa really does discourage multiple representation. So when you are talking brokerage representation, especially in a large brokerage like ours, you need to be able to explain to the consumer that they may come into multiple representation under brokerage representation. The reason we now do designated uh, representation is to limit the amount of multiple representation that consumers are exposed to or clients are exposed to. Multiple representation is not permitted unless both clients agree. Um, the brokerage or your designated representation uh, representative has a duty to promote and protect your best interests. And it's also, um, it is also important to understand the risks. Now the general consumer needs to understand the risks of multiple representation. They're outlined here and what to expect before you agree to multiple representation. It is giving the consumer the information that uh, the brokerage has duties and the res uh, designated representative has duties to the client. The differences in services that um, the client will receive if they go into multiple representation and any change in commission structures if you go into um, multiple representation. So you have to be able to explain that to a consumer. You also have to uh, be able to explain to them that they can refuse multiple representation at any time. And if they do, um, that their options are to be referred to another designated representative within the brokerage or to another brokerage altogether. And that is at the consumer's option. There is a talk um, now about open offers. Um, the term open offers isn't really accurate. Um, this is about disclosing certain contents of other offers to people who are involved in the transaction if there is more than one offer. If you're a seller, you need to be able to explain this to the consumer that a seller can decide how much information they want to share about competing offers with all the offers on the table only. Um, also, um, the um, seller needs to understand and the consumer, all consumers need to understand that if the contents of their offer is being shared, no private information or confidential information about the client can be shared. If the consumer is a buyer and they need to be made aware that the seller could share contents of their offer, uh, that they can decide not to participate in the um, in the competing offers. They also need to be made aware that um, Aria is crafting a clause that uh, they may be able to decline having their contents of their offer shared. And the last page of the um, of the guide is how to make a complaint. Rico is uh, informing the consumer or the general public that if there is something that they wish to complain about or something isn't uh, quite as they feel it should be, they should first contact the brokerage to see if the brokerage can mediate the problem, whatever it is. And secondly, they do have information here on how to contact RICO if the consumer has a complaint. 
the last page of the um, of the uh, guide is the acknowledgement, and it is asking the consumer to acknowledge that the uh, real estate agent uh, working for whichever brokerage has provided the um, consumer with a copy of the guide. You are going to ask to get that acknowledged and you may have to ask more than once because the consumer will not, I think, willingly sit down and sign off on this till they understand that the contents are there for their information purposes. Um, this will be a requirement with our transactions. So you will need to get this signed and it is a requirement of RICO that you present this guide to the consumer and have it acknowledged that they received it. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please call your management team. That's what we are there for and we're happy to clarify things for you. Thank you.